journey into the western section of Jamaica brings us to the parish of St. Elizabeth. St. Elizabeth, the breadbasket of the nation, is one of Jamaica's largest parishes. It is one of the oldest parishes in Jamaica and originally included much of the western section of the island. It was split to form parts of Westmoreland and Manchester in 1703 and 1814 respectively. St. Elizabeth was named in honor of Lady Elizabeth Modiford, wife of Sir Thomas Modiford, governor of Jamaica between 1664 and 1671. But in 1655, the British invaded the Spanish held island of Jamaica and a war broke out between Spain and the British. Nonetheless, the British overcome the Spanish. Some flee to Cuba, some went to Santo Domingo, leaving behind the freed slaves. Because when the British entered, they freed the slaves them to help them to fight. But the British still overcome. So the Spanish flee to Cuba, Santo Domingo, leaving behind these free slaves. Now these slaves, the British wanted them back on the plantation. And they made a call that they should return back to the plantation. But being in slavery so long, know the consequences of slavery. They said, no, we're not going back. But they could not have fought the British on the plains of Jamaica. Therefore, they took to the hills and the mountains. Some went to the Blue Mountain, some to the Janko Mountains, some to the Cockpit Mountains. Today, you are in the Cockpit Country. The Cockpit Country's vegetation is the largest and most intact example of wet limestone forest in Jamaica. Its flora exemplifies the outstanding endemism of the West Indies. And most of Jamaica's 550 native ferns grow in this area. You may ask why we say a compound. A compound is the name of the first leader for this community. It was Colonel Akampong who could you sent from Nanny Stone in Portland to come to here, come here, and to settle this, started this community over here. So Akampo, who was Nanny's husband, came and started the, the village. The British started to fight them very hard. And the war between them and the British went on for over 80 years. And in that process, the British spent over 250,000 pounds, passes for to four different laws of means and ways of how to get rid of these people. But it all fails. In 1738, when all their ammunition were done, food was gone, soldiers gone, then they had also sent back to England for more soldiers, more food, more money, and the thing, but the Queen going to his records and saying, well, we have been at it for over 80 years, yet we have nothing to show that we have made any headway to these people. So let us try something else. So in, in 1737, the British, the King of England, granted full powers to John Guthrie, Esquire, and Francis Sadler, Esquire, to come to Jamaica and to see if he can find these people and to make a peace treaty with them. They met on January 6, 1738, at a cave now known as the Peace Cave. And at that cave, a peace treaty was signed between the people who are now known as the Maroons and the British. And in that treaty, we had a right for self-governance. We had the right to own our own lands. Hence, today, we are living in lands separate and apart from out of Jamaica. And that land that we live in is known as the Cockpit Country. That's why the name Cockpit Country means it's a country within a country. You see, so we are living in a different country from the Jamaican country. But we, everybody just said Jamaica. 
but it's a country within a country. With a rich history of self-sustenance and culture in their compound community, one can see how they continue to thrive. If you look around us, you don't see any factories. You don't see any means of employment. The people who live here do farming. Farming is our chief means of living. And therefore, the people to eat the food we grow, 80-85% of the food we eat is what we grow. Herbal medicine, we have a whole, whole heap of herbal medicine that we use for her when you are sick. The things we people go to doctors for, we don't. We go around the back there and we cut some bush and we come home and we boil it and we drink it. And you get well again. Some people would have to go, some man outside, they probably go to the doctor several times. We don't bother going more than one, one trip of bush is all right. We find enough bush. To, to, to do what we do. Lumbers, we generally use our own materials for lumber. Up to today, we use plenty of our own materials for building our own homes. We may buy the zinc, the cement, and the mall because life goes on and here for everybody who up the ladder. So we, we go and sit in January. We have our celebration, our yearly celebration, because that was the day that the peace treaty was made, the king, and we keep that day as our annual celebration. So every year, at the 6th of January, that is our celebration day, that is our Christmas. And when you come to this community on that day, then you couldn't be sitting here. So, you don't, you don't have no seat. The city will anybody, people pack up right along the street. Everywhere you don't can see a place without people just stand up far, sit down. And you went to the mango tree with them. And on that day we start the celebration on the morning of the sixth. We start the drum beating, we playing the drums, kill some pigs and some chick from booster chicken. And we have a whole Yes, are two cases of white rum, and we drink and we splash, which was vibration all about, and everybody sing and dance and shout the whole day until in the evening we have a civic ceremony at the parade ground where the school is, and there we have the civic ceremony, and after the civic ceremony, all night we celebration. So we have our day, those days. One other means of income in the Maroon Village is the daily tours on offer. Their tour guides are very knowledgeable, informative, professional, and are ready to entertain you with lots of information on Jamaica's rich history of the Maroons. They will take you through little rural farm towns and villages. When you get to the village, you will be greeted by their learned resident Maroon guide who will give you a briefing before taking you on a tour of the village while indicating where the various seal grounds are. You will continue on to Kinda. This means one family. It was right here during the war days between Kojo and his people them. Where they used to sit and formulate all the war plants. All these rocks you're looking at were seats under the same tree. And from the treaty was signed up until now for 281 years. Every year when we have the festival in January, it started right here. The ceremonial food is being cooked here. The ceremonial food is cooked in that fenced area out there. Meanwhile, the food is being cooked. The people are singing, drumming and dancing. After the food is finished, cooked, some is taken down to an area called Old Town or Unfairy Town to give vibration to the ancestors. After that, any people march back up and the rest of food that is here is shared to whosoever want to eat. But one thing with that food, it's cooked straight without salt, spices or seasoning. Because when they were isolated back in those days, they never had the chance like we have now to run to the shop and say we will buy two maggi or two this or two that. They use pimento to flavor it up. And after flavoring it, it's cooked with the yam, pork, chicken and planting. Everything is cooked together. And 
eating and a lot of people rush to eat this food because they say when they eat this food they get like a ear on luck they get lucky through the ear by just eating this food when it comes here they can sit and listen to the history as you do they can walk the community see the different places of interest as i mentioned to you about the peace cave where the peace treaty was signed we can take you to the peace cave it's a cave in the woods so you have a long walk to go there and when you walk, you know, people love walking. And you walk in and you see lands and you see the trees and the herbs and you see. sometimes you can go to a river but have a look and see the, the river, how the river is situated. You go with birds, if you want to go bird hunting, oh, you are free to go bird hunting. If you want to go wild pig hunting, you go wild pig hunting and you come. All these things are things that happen here. So you have tourists come here who love bird shooting in bird season. You come. And we have guys that take you about into the woods and you shoot your bird and you come home. You have pig. You want to go and hunt a wild hog. You go there in the woods and hunt a pig and come back home. You have plenty of excitement and plenty of things to do. Our journey into the Yakampang Maroon was fun exciting and informative and was filled with thrilling moments of the Maroons' rich culture and history. If you are looking for an experience like this, please feel free to contact the Akampang Maroon Village. They will be more than happy to help you explore Jamaica.